Celery. What is acceleration? Yeah. yeah. What is acceleration? The increase in speed of an object. Is it only increase? It can be decrease. It could be decrease too. What is actually changing then when we're talking about acceleration? Speed. Speed. Close. Velocity, velocity is changing. Acceleration is actually how fast an object changes velocity. And there are three ways that it can change velocity. Gideon, you already said one of them. Um, slow down. Slow down. How else could it change velocity? Could it speed up. But is saying the same changing? No. How did you know? The velocity, so velocity has direction. So there are three ways that we can have acceleration. It, something could speed up, it could slow down, or it could change direction. Any of those are an acceleration. Yes, no. So it can change direction or it has to change direction? No, it may. Any, any one of those is an acceleration. Oh, okay. If you have speeding up or slowing down with a change in direction, that's still an acceleration. But what if you don't change direction, you just speed up? That's an acceleration. What if you don't speed up, you just change the direction? <laughs> just that any of the three or any combination of the three, but speeding up and slowing down at the same time is not possible. Wow. Well, well. So let's. I'm confused on how changing direction and acceleration. So if you're like standing here and then you turn, accelerate. No, that a turn is not changing direction. You're not really moving then. That is an angular acceleration, but we're talking about uh, linear motion. Let's take a couple examples that will hopefully help clarify. So let's consider a tennis ball. When during that motion is it accelerating? When it's going down. When it's going down. So like that part? Or up. Or I'm not I'm just trying to clarify. So you said when it's going down. So from the top until it hits my hand. How do we know it's accelerating? What is it doing during that time? Well, it accelerates both times. It starts at nothing and then you throw up, it accelerates, it stops, and then it comes back down accelerating. Okay, but but we're looking at it. yes, you're right. Let's break that apart into the individuals. As it's falling, what is it doing that's making it accelerating? It's speeding up. When else? Um, when you release it yep. in the middle of the sequence of the power. Okay, so I've released it. Yes, it flies up from the acceleration in your fingers. Okay, but when are my fingers accelerating it? When you push up. Them. Right, when I'm pushing up. That's my hand accelerating the ball. Is it accelerating as it's rising through the air? No, no it's deep. Because it's slowing down once it hits. It's ball. slowing down. What's causing it to slow down gravity. and then and Gra speed, gravity is causing it. So it's, gravity is slowing it down. Once it gets to the top and it falls, gravity is speeding it up. Well, those are both accelerations. Um, there are two other points or two other different parts of this that are also accelerating. Uh, it can also change direction. When um, does it do that? Uh, it could, yeah. Does it? Back down. Yeah, because it, it was going up, it is good. then it'll go down. So that point at the top, it's changing direction. What's causing it to change direction? Gravity takes the ball. Gravity again. So gravity affects it whenever it's in the air, and it always affects it when it's in the air. It doesn't shut off at any point. So gravity is always accelerating, it's doing one of these three things at each of the points. What about when I catch it? Is that an acceleration? No. Why not? Because it stops. Oh, yeah. So what's, it slows down to a stop. So when I throw it, that's when I'm throwing it, I'm, I'm giving, speeding it up. That's an acceleration. It's going up through the air and slowing down because of gravity. That's an acceleration. It stops just for a moment and changes directions at the top. That's an acceleration. Falling and speeding up, that's an acceleration. 
And then when I catch it, it slows down to a stop. That's an accelerator. So there's lots of different parts of acceleration. Both of them are either me or gravity doing, the, doing that. Mm -hmm. So it could literally be anything. The object could be like car, dog, pencil. Yeah, oh, anything. Yeah, whenever, whenever something does this, it is accelerating. Let's consider this one, though. Okay. Now, I'm, I'll see if I can avoid hitting stuff. I'm going to try and do this at a pretty even speed around my head. And let's pretend that I can do this evenly so that each revolution takes the same amount of time. Is this accelerating? Why? No, it's not because it's not changing directions if it's in the same It's not slowing down or it's not speeding up. It's not slowing down or speeding up. Is it changing directions? Yes. Constantly changing directions, you got it. So I can't quite draw a perfect circle, but let's take this as an example underneath. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to set the pen up. Let's take this and we'll, we'll picture it like we're looking down. If it's going that way. Now I wanna change my color here for a sec. Let's look at a couple points around here. There, there, there. If we, uh, you might want to sketch it as well. Let's, uh, let's picture this going around and around. And I first want to say what direction is velocity, which I'll do in red. How do we know the direction of something's velocity? From the way you started. How do you mean? From the starting point to the end point, you have to go in which That's, That is the average velocity. That's good. Right now, I'd like to know the instantaneous. So what is the velocity at just that moment? So instead of from the beginning to that point, which you're absolutely right about, um, that's sort of showing us the whole average. I'm just saying, what is it at a point? How do we know what direction of velocity is? That could be, although it's sort of flat here, it's not necessarily north, south, east, and west. It, velocity is always the direction something is moving at that moment. If we're looking at the, it's called the instantaneous velocity. Of that instant, velocity is the direction it's moving. So let's look at this one. If it's going around like this, what direction is it moving right there? This way? Yeah. How is it? Oh, from that point down there. Right, right here. Oh, yeah. If it were moving left, wouldn't it go in here? So a slight <laughs> turn going left. Up. Slight, it's going up, slight, and it will be it's turning to the left. But right there, it'd be going up. And then over here, it's turning. What about over here? Going down. Going close to down. Slight turn left. What about that one? Going slight turn west. Right. Oh. Slight turn up. Even I like this. If I pick just the top and bottom, left and right, then it'd be going straight up and down or left and right. It's always moving the direction of that. Does anyone know the name for these lines that I drew here that touch the would touch the circle at exactly one point and show the direction it was moving? Line of latitude? No. I don't know if you've encountered this, at least not very much in math yet. It's called a tangent. The tangent is a line that touches a circle at exactly one point. And so that's what these are. That shows the velocity. It shows the direction of motion. But now trickier, what direction at the same point, what direction is acceleration? What do you think? At the first start, going down. Going down like this? Nope. That one. This one? Yep. Not, not going down. Consider this. What is causing, in this case, the weight to accelerate directly? It is, it is centripetal force. What's, what is causing the centripetal force on that weight? Not me, not directly. What most directly is affecting? What's causing the weight at the end of the rope to move? The rope. The rope. The rope is causing it to move, right? 
No, your wrist is. No, my the rope is. Quit moving your wrist. My wrist is pulling on the rope. The rope is pulling on the weight. What direction is the rope pulling on the weight? It's not pulling down. How can we describe? We don't need a lot of chatter here. Yeah, Connor. Counterclockwise, no. Ropes can't pull that. Ropes can only affect things in one direction. Does it have to do with the weight of the rope? No. Side to side? Guys, what, direct, what direction can ropes act on things? No. That rope is not pushing the weight. Ropes suck at pushing. What are they good at? They pull. Oh, yeah, you can have your mine. Uh huh. <laughs> what direction would the rope be pulling the weight when it, the weight is there? In, in. in towards the center. In, yeah. What direction would the rope be pulling in, it? In, in, in. I'm sorry. What about that one? In, in. So this acceleration is always in towards the center of the circle. Oh, where your wrist is? Where, the, where my wrist is, because my wrist is pulling on the rope. But the rope pulls in. So this is actually what happens every time you go around a corner in your car. You feel like you're getting pushed out towards the edge. You're not. You're trying to go straight. The car is pulling you back the other way. So that's why you hit it. It's, it's a relative motion, right? You feel like, oh, I, I want to go out towards the curve. But that's not true. You want to go straight. The car is doing like the rope and pulling you in towards the center of that curve. Yes, no. Is that why, like, when you have to run into poles and stuff, like, you jerk forward? Yes. Okay. If you were to run into a pole oh. for any reason. <laughs> yeah. I know, maybe, like, it's not You'd have to be some sort of idiot to My run into a pole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. Uh, um, so it'd be like a rondo motion, but it's not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you feel that the whole time, but it's. What you feel is really yourself trying to go straight and the car pulling you in towards the center. My dad drove up a pole. Drove up a pole? I mean, an electric pole. Like the slide See, I stopped when I, when I got there, at least. <laughs> I didn't go up it. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> um, this will be our second formula. Now, we're trying to measure... Keep in mind what the definition of acceleration is. Our formula looks like this. Why do we have a triangle in here? Delta. 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 Good. You guys got it. First, I don't know. First hour was was sleepier or or it's slower or whatever. Little you guys. Yeah, that's delta. What does delta mean? Oh, change direction. It means no close. Change location. Change. Delta always means change. We've seen this in slope. Delta y over delta x. It means the change in y over the change in x. Here it means the change in v. We always calculate delta something the same way. We take the second value minus the first. So delta V, oops, shoot, I didn't want that. I got here. Delta V will mean the same thing that delta Y does or delta X. It will be the second value minus the first value over t. This is actually the more useful way for us to write it when we're doing some calculations because we're going to need both those v1 and v2. What do these little arrows mean? Direction. They're directions. They're directions. What kind of values are they? Vectors. Yeah, so acceleration and velocity are both vectors. That means direction is important. Velocity we were already talking about. The direction of velocity is the direction it's something is moving. Acceleration is the direction it's changing. Yeah? There's a velocity pencil. What is that supposed to be? I have no idea. But I mean, I don't care. I don't care. Um, 
Now we're going to make do relatively simple problems in class here. We're not we're not going to do calculations on circles. That gets really really challenging. We have to do a lot of geometry work to figure out how a velocity that was going this way gets to going that way and what acceleration caused it. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, we're going to do stuff in a straight line, but that straight line still has two directions. Could be one way or the other. And so we're going to keep track of those using one direction as positive, the other direction as negative. And we'll practice this too but for, for a little bit. So this is just what we've been talking about, change of velocity. It's this last thing that I want you to copy down though. Because these are vectors, there's a positive direction and a negative direction for both acceleration and velocity. And we have to make sure to keep track of that. Often a little sketch helps. We, and we can decide which direction is positive and negative, although there are um, normal ways to do that, conventions we call it, to do that. Let's do one example today, and then we'll move on to some work time. Oh, we're not done? Okay, I'll give you another moment. We're going to do one example. We're going to skip this next page for now, free fall, which we'll spend a lot of time talking about. Example one, Herbie the love bug. Herbie the love bug. Yep. Herbie the love bug can accelerate from a stop to 30 meters per second in 4.3 seconds, and I want to know what is his acceleration. Okay, so for just like the previous stuff, the first thing to do here is to identify what we're looking for. It says what was his acceleration, so we want to find A. I'm going to write down our formula. And we'll write it the little bit longer way because it's easier to deal with. No. That's a velocity. Um, now, importantly, we have two velocities, v1 and v2, and then a, a time here. This is, consider this like a window of time that is t long, in this case, 4.3 seconds. v1 is always the speed, or the velocity really, at the beginning of our time. So as the stopwatch starts, V1 is our speed. V2 is the speed at the end of this time. We have to keep those straight. Sometimes V1 will be greater than V2 and sometimes V1 will be less than V2. And it's important that we keep them straight. What is V1? What speed does Herbie start at here? Oh, nothing. Okay, why, how do you know? Because ever, he can, um, he, from a stop. he accelerates. He accelerates, that doesn't mean from a, from zero. Accelerates from a stop. From a stop. These are the keywords that, that verify that, yep, he starts at zero. It's important that we understand why. And then he goes to the second velocity, which is 30 meters per second. Hey, now we can put values in. We'll just make sure that it's always V2 minus V1. So it would be 30 meters per second is V2 minus 0 meters per second is V1 over 4.3 seconds. Acceleration then. The numbers are easy. It's 30 minus 0 is 30 divided by 4.3. That's just under 7. And I did that first hour, so I remember that it's 6.98. What kind of units do we get? Meters? Just meters? Why just meters? Somebody says no. You cancel the S. Is that, are you sure? Well, so this one does it, since we're adding or subtracting up here, these sort of merge into one. So really we have a meters per second on the top and then we're dividing that by second. I see where you're going with that. But adding and subtracting doesn't make new ones, um, only multiplication would. So if he 
second? Yes. We can't cancel that, and I'll show you why in a sec. Meters per second per second is a really good way to do it. A couple of you asked me about that on the quiz yesterday when you were saying which of these are velocities or good units for velocities. You said, what about, what is that? I said, well, don't worry about what it is. If it's right, if that's a velocity, then mark it down. It's not, it's an acceleration. Um, math wise, let's see, I can do a way up top. Let's think about if we were, if we had a quarter of a pizza, so let's say one over four, and we divided that in four equal pieces, we wouldn't cancel the fours. We wouldn't suddenly have full, uh, one full pizza, would we? How much of a pizza would we have? How would we evaluate that one quarter over four? What do you get if you cut a quarter into four pieces? You get a quarter of a quarter. How much is that? Let's do the math. If we are, if we are going to evaluate, if we're going to divide one fraction by another fraction, what's the trick in math that you learn to do that? Keep it, change it, flip it. We keep the top, which is 1 over 4. We change the division to a multiplication. And then this is like 4 over 1. We can always put that. We flip it. What do we get there? 1 16. So you'd have a 16th of your pizza. We're going to do the same thing over down here. and then, But this is also a good way. So we have, and run out of room to write, meters per second on top. We flip, we change this to a multiply, and then we flip the bottom, so it would be one over s. What do we get if we multiply these two fractions? What's on top? Just the m. Guys, we should not be chatting at all. What's on the bottom? What's s times s? S squared. S squared. That's another way to write this. So another correct response would be 6.98 meters per second squared. These are equivalent. They mean the same thing. But I like this method better because what this tells us is that we have, we have about 7 meters per second change every second. That's what acceleration is. It's a how fast are we changing our velocity. This is saying we're changing our velocity by about seven meters per second every second. So my preference is to write it out this way. This is the way you'll see it in most books and things, meters per second squared. When we do um, computer problems, though, it's e either way is acceptable to the computer, but it's easier to type this way out. You do a meters per second per second on your keyboard. A lot easier than getting this raised to. Okay.